You're watching Way 31 Huntsville. Live from the heart of the Tennessee Valley, this is Way 31 News, live at 10. If you own what you paid for, they're standard for all cars and trucks, but not for everything with four wheels. Some say a lack of them lead to theft. Good evening, everyone. I'm Don Phelps. And I'm Erin Dacey. A closer look at why pricey ATVs don't require titles and what it means to you, the consumer. But right now, your first look at weather. Chief Meteorologist Shane Butler is in with your weather right away. And skies are cloudy out across the valley at this hour. Temperatures in the mid-50s. The winds out of the northeast at 5 miles per hour. Overnight, looks like we're going to keep the clouds and some showers moving in here as we go toward the early morning hours. Northeast winds at around 4 to 8 miles per hour. Overnight lows will drop off into the mid to upper 40s. Tomorrow, looks like cloudy and wet to start out your weekend. Temperatures for highs in the mid to upper 50s. Coming up in just a bit, I'll take a look at the rest of the uh, weekend forecast. It's all straight ahead. Don Aaron. All right, thanks, Shane. Vehicle titles, they are something that we're all required to have. It's proof that your car is really yours. But not all vehicles are required to have titles, and some say that leads to theft. Way 31's Tim Trudell joins us live from the newsroom. And Tim, we're talking about ATVs here or four wheelers. That's right. Down there, look at it this way. If I sell you even the cheapest car for, say, $100, I still have to give you a title under Alabama law. But if I sell you a like new ATV for, say, $7,000, I don't have to give you a title. And that has a lot of people talking. All terrain vehicles are extremely popular in this part of the country. Dealers estimate 2,000 were sold in Madison County alone last year. There's so many uses for them around here. We get a lot of people using them for farming. Obviously, hunting is very big around here. Besides being useful, drivers say they're also recreational. It's fun. Fun thing I've ever done. But these vehicles, which cost seven or eight thousand dollars new, are pretty easy to steal. Alabama doesn't require them to be titled, so there's no official record of ownership. Thieves can try to resell them to dealers. We look over each bike when they come in, look for signs that the ignition's been tampered with or something along those lines, but it would be very easy to camouflage that. Thieves could also try to resell them directly to you. All-terrain vehicles, even when they're used, are still not cheap. They're still selling for thousands of dollars. So what's the best way to know the one that you hop on, the one that you take home? Is it stolen? Well, ask a lot of questions. The best thing you can do is ask the person if they have the paperwork for it. Um, the certificate of origin or a bill of sale from whoever they bought it from last. Dealers say between 10 and 15 percent of ATVs could in fact be stolen. And unlike stolen cars or motorcycles, police have no way to track titleless ATVs. You've got a, a pretty fair chance of eventually getting your bike back if it's stolen or your car or something that, that has a way of tracking it. That's something to think about for you. Now, dealers tell me, in fact, ATVs did have to be titled in the state of Alabama. About five years ago, the state stopped doing it, and according to them, they say it was just too much paperwork. Reporting live in the newsroom, Tim Trudell, 831 News. Yeah, you know, Tim, we're always reporting about these ATV thefts, and they seem to come in waves. Well, there's, they, according to these dealers, there's plenty of them out there. They say, again, between 10 and 15 percent. They don't have any exact numbers, but they say, and one of the things about Alabama, because they don't require titles, they say ATVs could be stolen in other states and then resold here in Alabama because there's no titles here. So they say it's kind of a dumping ground. It's definitely something to look out for. Buyer beware. Thanks, Tim. You bet. Well, Alabama has some of the strictest laws aimed at keeping children smoke-free. In our special investigation, we discovered the laws aren't always being enforced. And now, Way 31's Adam May has details on another loophole. He joins us now live with more. Adam? Thanks, Don. If you know four high schoolers, chances are that one of them smokes. Where and how they get their cigarettes is our focus in easy sale, teens and tobacco. Can I have some uh, Newports, too? Shocking results in a Way 31 News undercover investigation. In Huntsville, 35% of convenience store clerks sold cigarettes to our Way 31 intern without asking for identification. Channel 31, I wanted to know, you just sold a young girl's cigarettes. You did. This clerk says he was too busy to card our intern. Looking at the undercover tape, you can see he wasn't that busy. Sometimes when it gets busy, you know, when you got a lot of things going on, you think they're a lot older and really they're not. Sometimes they get away with it. Several gas stations didn't even ask for ID, just laid them out there on the table. Either they were talking on the phone or too busy. Now to a land where more people appear not to care, the internet. More and more teenagers are logging on to buy packs of whatever they want. A recent study sent teenagers to the internet with credit cards, and here's what they found. 
26 different websites selling tobacco. Only half listed age restrictions. Not a single one displayed the Surgeon General's warning, and not one of the teens was ever asked for proof of age. Whether it be online or at the stores, enterprising teenagers can get their cigarettes as long as people let them. Right now, there's an increasing number of cases where teenagers are ordering hundreds of cartons of cigarettes online and then selling the individual packs at school for profit. Even the major tobacco companies agree that the Internet is not a place to sell cigarettes, but for now, it's perfectly legal. Reporting live, Adam May, Way 31 News. Don Aaron. Thank you for your continued follow-up, Adam. Well, it's an old drug with a new name. Prozac is now packaged in a bright new color. The company that makes it says many women need it to deal with premenstrual syndrome. Way 31's Allison Finch joins us now with more on this story. And Allison, Prozac generally used for depression. Well, that's true, Don and Aaron, but now the company that makes it says some women who suffer from an extreme form of PMS called premenstrual dysphoric disorder can use it, only they're calling it something different. Now, the new spiffed up version is called Seraphim, but beneath the softer name and colorful label, it's the same old Prozac. Darden Heritage sees thousands of pills a day. It's his knowledge of the pharmaceutical business that makes him an expert in his field. That's why when he saw Seraphim hit the shelves, he wasn't fooled. Well, the Seraphim is a purple capsule, still 10 milligrams Prozac, and the Prozac 10 milligrams is a green capsule. But otherwise? Otherwise, it's the same thing, just different colors. Eli Lilly makes both drugs. While Prozac is generally used for severe depression, Lilly says Seraphim is for irritability, sadness, sudden mood changes, tension, and bloating. Darden says using Prozac often carries a stigma, but a new name could make the same drug socially acceptable. I wouldn't call it a scam, but it's a, a marketing ploy. Dr. Eric Talent sees women suffer all forms of PMS, sometimes in the form of depression. But before he prescribes Seraphim, he always tells his patients it's really only Prozac. And I think that the drug is very effective for those patients who respond to it. Of course, each patient is different. But it's a, to me, it's a very helpful drug in treatment of the symptoms that the women undergo. That a company has renamed and resold a drug. GlaxoSmithKline repackaged a depression medication called Wellbutrin. They named it Zyban and sold it as an aid to stop smoking. Oh. Interesting to see how they work this and use that marketing tool. Exactly, and a lot of drugs, you know, create side effects that are good at treating other things. So who knows how many drugs you can use to treat all sorts of symptoms. Repackage. Add a different name and different color, and you get a new drug. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. Well, new at 10 tonight, NASA announces some major changes in its Space Launch Initiative program. The agency says it will not add initiative funds to the X-33 or X-34 programs. They believe the benefits of the project did not justify the cost. As a result, the current X-33 program will end when the agreement between NASA and Lockheed Martin expires on March 31st. The X-33 program began back in 1996 as part of a reusable launch vehicle program. NASA spent more than $900 million on the program. Also new at 10 tonight, a three-year court battle between Intergraph and Intel comes to an end. Today, a U.S. appeals court handed down a decision in favor of the Madison-based company. Intergraph originally filed suit against Intel in 1997. It included allegations of illegal coercive behavior, patent infringement, and antitrust violations. A valley man who risked his own life to save two others is honored today. Jay Wilson stopped a runaway Jeep Grand Cherokee on Interstate 65. Today, he was awarded a Carnegie Medal. You first met Wilson in July in my follow-up file. The accident happened in December of 1999, south of Coleman. Wilson helped save Carol Roberts and her unborn child. In July, Roberts gave birth to a son. Oh, by now you probably heard that Target is bringing more than 600 new jobs to the Valley. Today, thousands of folks lined up for their applications. A steady stream of job hopefuls flocked into the distribution center for the Target job fair. They got a chance to hear more about the company and pick up an application. Target will hire 675 local workers. They'll make between $8.60 and $10 an hour. People who showed up today say the huge turnout surprised them. Wow. Yeah. I come from a small town, and this is about as many people that live in my, my hometown. 
The job fair continues tomorrow from 10 until 4 and Saturday from 9 until 1. Target will contact people for interviews starting next week. If those tough stains aren't coming out in the wash, what's next? Well, you call in the pros. Tonight in part two of the stain game, Karen Peterson puts professional dry cleaners to the test. Does it work Thursdays coming up? And it's the day after the frightening earthquake, picking up the pieces on the West Coast. A soggy weekend is on the way. When will the rain begin? Chief Meteorologist Shane Butler has your exclusive Doppler Force 31 future cast next on Way 31 News, live at 10. You're watching Way 31 News, live at 10. Coverage you can count on. 31 Weather is brought to you by Ziegler, a tradition of great taste. We wear our favorite shirts, and all too often, we ruin them. But do those accidental spills mean those prized garments are history? Yesterday, Karen Peterson sampled some solutions you can try at home to salvage your shirts. In tonight's Does It Work Thursday, Karen goes to the dry cleaners for round two of the stain game. Your white shirt is a wide open target for life's most serious stains. So for the sake of our experiment, we take the harshest ingredients a poly cotton blend could meet. Potent juices like grape and tomato straight up on our four Perry Ellis shirts. When the white button downs appeared thoroughly stained and completely trashed, we brought them to four different dry cleaners. After the experts did their thing, we examined their work. Dry cleaner number one, it is stark white. Brilliant blinding almost. Dry cleaner number two, another winner. Check that out. It is, oops, what do we have over here? We've got a little spot. Let's see dry cleaner number three. Any little minuscule stains here? Dry cleaner number three, you did all right. And dry cleaner number four. Looks pretty good. Overall, the dry cleaners get a way to go. The prices range from $1.35 to $1.65. Not a bad deal when you're talking about saving a $50 shirt. If you have an idea for Does It Work Thursday, please let me know. You can call me at 533-3131, extension 294, or email me at peterson at waytv.com. My dry cleaners got out latex paint oh, really? off a black trench coat. I couldn't believe it. But what I was going to say is, is that the best thing about, about it is you don't have to iron the shirts. You know, that is worth $1.65 every time, every especially time. with cotton shirts. They'll there kill you. you. Mm -hmm. Well, state championships are on the line in Birmingham. Greg Screws has the story in sports and the Tennessee Titans cut Al Del Greco. Greg has the latest from Nashville. An Islamic militant speaks out and his message hits close to home. News around the world is next on Way 31 News Live at 10. If you see news happening, dial 31 number one on your singular wireless phone. Life isn't a library. Feel free to speak up. Singular wireless, what do you have to say? Damage from the Seattle earthquake is now estimated in the billions of dollars. The recovery effort tops news around the world tonight. The earth is now still, but the cleanup efforts are in high gear. The quake measuring 6.8 on the Richter scale toppled buildings and sent more than 250 people to the hospital. Washington's governor says he is working closely with business and homeowners to rebuild their damaged property. From the Middle East, the world's most wanted Islamic militant Osama bin Laden speaks out. The leader says he's applauding the bombing of the USS Cole. He describes the destroyer as the ship of injustice that sailed to its doom. Bin Laden's remarks were recorded in Afghanistan and broadcast on a satellite channel. An Atlanta man suspected in a deadly hit and run now faces serious drug charges. Police say the 18-year-old was driving a pickup truck when he slammed into an SUV killing a young father. Investigators say they were shocked when they found 38 pounds of cocaine stuffed in the tires. The suspect fled the scene but was later arrested by police. English scientists are investigating a suspected meteorite fall. A woman walking her dog called police after she heard an explosion followed by a rush of air. The woman says she then saw a smoking crater in the ground. Geology experts say the object formed a hole about 25 centimeters in diameter and is now making strange noises. Can you imagine? So that's what went by my car tonight on the way back. That was it. I believe I'd be moving. Oh. Greg is in Naval Sports. Well, state champions, uh, championships declared tonight in, uh, uh, down in Birmingham. That's right? right. They're down in Birmingham. The trophies start to go out. We'll check in with that. And also, what a day for the River City. Decatur's boys and girls go to the Final Four. We also have the latest on Al Del Greco. Thanks for watching Way 31 Sports at 10 o'clock. The meteorite really shook me. <laughs>
31 Sports is brought to you by Great Southern Wood. Now, Greg Screws and the Way 31 Sports team. Al Del Greco. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The people could just be here during the breaks. Okay, let's start over. We're trained professionals. Al Del Greco, released by the Tennessee Titans today, a 17-year vet. He's not mad at that guy, Jeff Fisher. He did invite him to his golf tournament, 27 of 33 in the year for field goals. He is seventh in NFL scoring. Good evening, everybody. I'm Greg Screws. And we're all trained professionals here. State championships are a very special thing. Memories for a lifetime. People who can't remember what they had for lunch can remember every details of a state championship, win or loss. And today they started giving out the big trophies. Let's check in with the 2A girls. Yeah, the Pisgah fans cranking things up. They're ready to see Chastity Tucker get two points right there. Unfortunately for Pisgah, this would not be their night. Red Bay's Courtney Duncan gets two. The folks in Hatton may be noticing this score. They had Red Bay an opportunity to beat them, but let them get away in the regionals. Red Bay beats Pisgah 51-46 to get the 2A girls title. And I bet my buddies out of Hatton will be back next year. All right, let's check in with Barber County and Mars Hill. 32-3, and Mars Hill going into this game. Kevin Mitchell, eyes tries, buys the three from the corner. But Mars Hill gets beat. Barber County beats them in the championship game. 69 to 59. On Saturday, the River City will be decidedly low key. The Decatur boys and girls will be in the 6A final. A rematch for the girls, for the boys, a chance for their first title since Earl Morris coached the Red Raiders to one back in the night back in 1970. Let's check in with that guy, Howard Pride. He's got a smile on his face because he knows his team's going to play well. Ronnie Colbert with the monster jam. Decatur wins 49-46. They get Sidney Lanier at 4 o'clock on Saturday. All right, let's check in with the girls. The girls played Central of Florida. Mike Smith's team, the defending 6A champions. They played tough today. Shelly Stanley gets two. Morgan Vickery's going to come up. Eyes tries, buys the three. They beat Central of Florence 50-45. to 45, But Hoover, well, they got some matchup problems for Decatur. Great player. Makes them so difficult to match up with. I don't know if anybody in the state can match up with them. They can go big. They can go quick. They can go little. Uh, and, and I can't do that. Decatur Heritage tonight at the buzzer got beat in their game. We'll check in with that tomorrow. It's not very often you hear a sports guy cite Liz Smith, the gossip columnist, but tonight she's reporting that Tom Cruise is looking for a movie project. It isn't hard to figure that one out. She says that Tom Cruise is putting together a movie project on the life of Dale Earnhardt. Cruise is a race fan. He made Days of Thunder, and all I have to say is if you make a movie about Earnhardt, you better do a better job than he did on Days of Thunder. There are still folks in the NASCAR front office who weren't very happy with that. I want to thank the folks very quickly, uh, uh, Don and Aaron out of Kateka. We had a great time today. Tomorrow, Dr. Seuss's birthday. I'm headed over to Russellville Elementary to read to those folks over there. Tomorrow, we had a great time at Kateka. You going to take your oh. hat? They even got take me a. They even got me a. They even got me a Mr. Cat, Mr. Cat, a cat in a hat, hat, Mr. Cat hat, cat hat. <laughs> I'm gonna have one of those on tomorrow at uh, Jones Valley Elementary. It's a lot of green fun. eggs and ham breakfast. There All you right, go. Yum. I'll save some for you. <laughs> Gee, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Motorcycle riders take to the track in Utah. <laughs> but it's not as usual as it sounds. Slipping and sliding to victory next on Way 31 News live at 10. If you see news happening, dial 31 number one on your singular wireless phone. Life isn't a library. Feel free to speak up. Singular wireless. What do you have to say? Motorcycle enthusiasts from around the country converged in Utah today. Salt Lake City is the site for this year's World Cup Ice Speedway Championship. Keyword is this daring competition is on ice. Contestants riding lightweight motorcycles race an oval ice track. But they do get a little help. Steel-studded tires give them traction and allow the bike to go from 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds on the slippery track. Mm -mm, not we, me. We it's dangerous. No. We gotta get one. No. no. Our last look at your extended Doppler Force forecast next on Way 31. Okay, we've got some wet weather in here just in time for the weekend. The sky's going to be cloudy out there. Temperatures in the 50s, overnight lows in the 40s. And it looks as though, again, on or late Sunday into Monday, a little cold air lingering back around. Some moisture there could touch off a flake or two. Nothing major, though. Nothing major. All right. Thanks, Thanks Shane. Shane. And thank you for watching Way 31 News Live at 10. Nightline's next. Good night.